you're very welcome to our uh, roundtable discussion on the scriptures. And uh, we're going to be looking at uh, Abraham chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. So, Daddy, you want to start us off? And finding there was greater happiness and peace and rest for me, I sought for the blessings of the fathers and the right whereunto I should be ordained to administer the same. Having been myself a follower of righteousness, desiring also to be one who possessed great knowledge and to be a greater follower of righteousness and to possess a greater knowledge and to be a father of many nations, a prince of peace and desiring to receive instructions and to keep the commandments of God. I became a rightful heir, a high priest, holding the right belonging to the fathers. It was conferred upon me from the fathers. It came down from the fathers from the beginning of time, yea, even from the beginning or before the foundation of the earth, down to the present time, even the right of the firstborn or the first man who is Adam or first father through the fathers unto me. I sought for mine appointment unto the priesthood according to the appointment of God unto the fathers concerning the seed. Excellent. Uh, so what are some thoughts on these verses? Some immediate thoughts that come to mind are, here's Abraham, his own father being wicked, and yet he has a desire as one who has a great knowledge and also a desire to be, to be righteous, to have uh, more righteousness revealed unto him, more ways to be righteous and also to have greater knowledge. And to also, interestingly, in verse 2, to be a father of many nations. He's motivated by a desire to be a father of many nations. And, and this is what motivates him to seek for that blessing of being a rightful heir of the priesthood. Uh, because it, of course, is a source of righteousness and knowledge. And that kind of informs the rest of the passages too. One of the things that really strikes me is we learn um, also in the book of Abraham that the purpose of mortality is to be proved, to be tested. And we're specifically told if we keep our second estate, we will be added upon. And that phrase added upon, I, I look at this and I say, I think this is a perfect example. Abraham was someone who was seeking diligently to be added upon, to grow in his knowledge of God, in his understanding, in his righteousness, in his obedience. He was magnified and enlarged. He was increased. He was expanded as a person. And we know from the book of Abraham later on that he, he gained many great revelations and insights um, and then became a great preacher and teacher of these truths. And so I think it's the same for us. We can become more than we ever were in the first estate. And in this second estate, when we pass on from this estate, uh, we will be magnified again in the next estate. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that idea in verse 2. Uh, Abraham's desire is to be more accountable before the Lord. And the way he goes about that is uh, trying to become more like Christ. He desires to be a prince of peace. Now that's a title for Christ, but it's also a title, as we learn in many instances, for those who follow Christ and who do a good job of following him. Uh, what I love as well in verse 3, uh, this, these verses that we've read are the backdrop for the Abrahamic covenant. But what Abraham is teaching us, that this covenant has been established from the earliest times. We could call it the Adamic or Enochian uh, or whatever covenant, the patriarchal covenant. This has been from the beginning of days and will continue forever. Or even, even before the foundation mm -hmm. of the earth. And there's a pre-mortal element to this, that this was a power that resided with God himself, the ultimate father. And what's interesting is Abraham, again, doesn't have a righteous father, but he's looking back to these other righteous fathers, Adam and others, and to the father of all, and desiring to know what they knew and do what they did. 
And then in verse 4, that involves him desiring the, 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 the priesthood which he receives. But interestingly, it says uh, that he received the priesthood according to the appointment of God unto the fathers concerning the seed. So the priesthood isn't just backward looking to righteous fathers, righteous examples of fatherhood and presiding in families. It's also forward looking to the seed, to the children. And Abraham is the perfect example of that desire to be a father himself of many nations and to have a concern for those who would come after, that they would have a right to the same blessings as he himself enjoyed. Absolutely. And in fact, one further thought, um, you mentioned about the Prince of Peace and how it's a title for Christ. The perfect example of one who shows great reverence for the Father is, of course, Christ himself.